Let's take a look at the lymph nodes. There are two functions for the lymph nodes. The first function is to filter the lymph that is flowing through them before the lymph is returned to the blood. During this filtering process, microbes such as viruses and bacteria are removed from the lymph. About 95% of these pathogens are removed at the lymph nodes. The second function for lymph nodes is the activation of lymphocytes. What this means is that the lymph nodes are the primary site where lymphocytes encounter their antigens for the first time. So keep in mind if I ask you where is the primary site for the activation of lymphocytes, you will tell me the lymph nodes. The lymph nodes contain macrophages, dendritic cells, as well as lymphocytes. Lymph nodes are found throughout your body, but there are three regions where they are concentrated. The axillary region, or armpit, receives lymph from the upper appendages and the breast. The cervical region within the neck receives lymph from the head region and the neck. And the inguinal region receives lymph from the lower appendages, the legs. Most lymph nodes are going to be less than one inch in size and will be shaped like beans. Let's look at the structure of a lymph node. Lymph nodes are surrounded by a fibrous connective tissue capsule. This is illustrated in green. The capsule invaginates or moves inward in certain areas to form trabeculae. These trabeculae separate the lymph node into compartments. There are two distinct regions within the lymph node the outer cortex, which makes up four-fifths of the node, and the superficial area of the outer cortex, you will find primarily B lymphocytes, and in the deeper area of the cortex, T lymphocytes. Follicles, recall, are a type of lymphoid tissue. You'll find the follicles in the superficial region of the cortex, and it will consist of B lymphocytes. In this illustration, notice that all of the follicles have germinal centers, so these are secondary follicles. The middle region is called the medulla, and it will consist of medullary cords, where both B and T lymphocytes are found, as well as macrophages. The sinuses are lymphatic capillaries that have reticular fibers crisscrossing them. Within the sinuses, you'll find macrophages waiting to come in contact with the pathogens as the lymph flows through these sinuses. The subcapsular sinuses are located right underneath the capsule, and they receive the lymph from the afferent lymphatic vessels. The lymph continues into medullary sinuses located within the medulla. From the medullary sinuses, the lymph will then move into efferent lymphatic vessels. Afferent collecting vessels feed the lymph nodes. Afferent collecting vessels drain the lymph nodes. Notice there are more afferent than efferent collecting vessels. This helps slow the movement or the flow of the lymph through the lymph node, allowing the macrophages to filter or cleanse the lymph, as well as the lymphocytes to encounter their antigens. Let's look at the flow of lymph through the nodes. Lymph will enter the nodes by way of the afferent lymphatic vessels and move into the subscapular sinuses. Next, it will flow into the medullary sinuses and out of the efferent lymphatic vessels. Remember, you have more afferent collecting vessels than you have efferent collecting vessels. 